Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God has awakened us to another bright new day with all its opportunities for serving Him. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. Our opening sentence is on page 35. And we continue lower down on page 35 and following. We give thanks to the Father who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints and light. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. We pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, May we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Venite. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. And the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come to this point where we make ourselves right with God. We bring before God those things of which our consciences are afraid, and let us ask for God's forgiveness. As we pray together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the psalm, or psalms this morning. We have two psalms, Psalms 82, which begins on page 576, and Psalm 98, which begins on page 596. So we complete Psalm 82 on page 576, and we go right on onto page 596 for Psalm 98. Let us recite the Psalms together. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. 
They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. Psalm 98 Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has, has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With the trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And we continue. But our readings, the first reading is taken from the book of Malachi, the prophet Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, Indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. And we continue with the Benedictus on page 40. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel, you have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We come now to our second reading. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of John. We're reading John chapter 3, verses 22 to 30. John 3, verses 22 to 30. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptized. John also was baptizing at Enon near Salim, because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is, baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Let's reflect this morning on this feast day, the feast of the birth of the nativity of St. John the Baptist. One of the most powerful, for me, sentences in the Bible is the one written by Paul, where he says, When the fullness of time had come, in Galatians chapter 4, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son. And the fullness of time had come. To me, that speaks so powerfully about our God. God, of course, extends beyond time. God is eternal. You know, and God is is loving. And you know, we read in the collect today. It talks about Almighty God, by whose providence God, you know, God is a God who is always concerned about his people, you know. His providence is something that, that you know, we need to reflect on. God is eternal. God's time is not our time. A thousand years is, is like a day. So God's time frame is, is, is something that we humans, you know, cannot appreciate. But God is ever, like the hymn writer says, God is working his purpose out. And so God's you know, following the failure of Adam and Eve you know, to, to be obedient and sin came into the world, mankind was lost. But as the, Paul again in Ephesians chapter 1 reminds us that God from the very beginning you know, planned to restore, he had this plan, Jesus Christ, 
to restore his people. But God's time is not our time. And we can imagine that God's people, you know, over all the years have, you know, wandered, you know, having to live under various conditions where they have been dominated by other nations of the world and so on. You know, God's faithful people would have cried out, you know. No. But God, God's time is not our time. And so, indeed, when the fullness of time had come, God was ready to send His Son to save mankind. When the fullness of time had come. But even as God was, was prepared to send His Son for our salvation, God, God's plan was to send John the Baptist to prepare the way. What a wonderful God. God was going to give us a chance, humankind, a chance to, you know, to be warned, as it were, so that we open our hearts to be ready to receive the Savior when He comes. And so God chose John the Baptist. Interesting, you know, we read about John the Baptist. I mean, I think, when you think about him, his father was a priest of the order of Abijah. His mother was a descendant of Aaron. You know, his... his we can't question his, you know, his birth at all, you know. John the Baptist. You know, coming from that kind of, you know, religious background. And when we read about John the Baptist, what a powerful person he was. John the Baptist fulfilled his ministry. Really, you know, we imagine John a powerful fellow, you know. A bit of a weird lifestyle, you know. He lived in the wilderness and war, you know. Eat, eat, you know, honey and so on. And war clothes of animal hair and all that. Very reminiscent of Elijah, the prophet. And John, you know, we were told, preached powerfully. John didn't, you know, he, when, when the Pharisees and so on came and he knew how, how hypocritical they were, he didn't. As we would say in Trinidad, I didn't put water in his mouth to tell them. You know, you, you know, you have to come here. When you come here, you, you have to come with true repentance. You know, even Herod, John wasn't afraid to confront Herod because his, you know, marrying his brother's wife was 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 wrong. You know, and the, the, all the circumstances. So John was fearless. He, you know, regardless of his position. Herod, he knew Herod was a very powerful man and could really put an end to his life as he indeed did. But John was not, you know, going to compromise. You know, when the Pharisees came, he was ready to rebuke them. You know, you have to come when you come, come. Let this be genuine repentance. You don't don't bring your hip hypocrisy here. And John really did a very, you know, powerful work. And he called the people to repentance. John's baptism, sometimes we don't really understand it. John's baptism is not the baptism that we do today. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. God's people, God sent John to prepare the way for the coming of the one who would save mankind. They must be ready, their hearts must be readied and open now to receive that message of salvation from Jesus. And they needed to change their lives around. You know. John brought that urgent message of repentance. And called people as a sign of repentance to baptize, to be, to be baptized. That's John's baptism, a baptism of repentance as he was preparing his people for the coming of the one who was going to be saviour of the world. And in our gospel passage today, we are reminded that, you know, Jesus, be, you know, started to, you know, when Jesus came onto the scene, John's disciples, John had, John had disciples, John's disciples were ready to, you know, sort of stir up what we might call je simply jealousy. Here's this other fellow over there with disciples and they're baptizing people and so on. 
They were trying to say, hey, somebody competing with you. But John understood. And it's really worth um, our, our you know, listening to John's words very clearly. You know, he says, he says, the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. John was not the bridegroom. <laughs> John was a friend of the bridegroom. He was, you know, <laughs> one of the best, you know, one of the party. Yeah. But he wasn't the bridegroom. He understood it very well. He understood his role very well. And so he was saying to the disciples, you know, my joy has been fulfilled. You know, I have done my part fully and, and I'm, you know, I'm happy to be able to be called for that purpose and to discharge that purpose. But now that the bridegroom has come, you know, the bridegroom must take pride of place in a manner of speaking. He must increase. He is the one I came to open, to, to prepare the way for him. As scripture reminded me, I am the voice that was, that, you know, was crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. And, you know, I'm the one that Isaiah was talking about. I came to prepare the way to warn people you know, that he was coming and have their hearts, you know, call them to repentance so their hearts will be ready to receive the, you know, the saving word of God's Son, the Messiah, Savior of the world. So he, now that he has come, I am to move out and give him the stage as it were. He is the one that I was, I came to prepare the way for. John made it very clear to his disciples in these famous words, he must increase, but I must decrease. Because I have done the work that I came to do, and now it's, now, thank God, he has come, and it really means the end of my ministry. It really means the end of my ministry, because my whole ministry was about preparing for him. And, you know, we, 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 John's, John's example is a wonderful example. His power as a preacher, his fearlessness confronting any kind of evil and hypocrisy he met anyway. And then that understanding of his role in God's overall plan of salvation. He had done his part and he must give way. And he had no problems with that. And he made it clear to his disciples, I must decrease and he, for whom I was, I was doing all the work in preparation, he must now take center stage. He must increase. And that's a wonderful lesson for many of us because some of us don't know when the time comes. Whatever our ministry might be, however wonderful work we might have done, it is time for us, for various reasons, to step off the stage. It is a new, you know, generation our time, we, we served well in our time, but we must give way, others must increase, so that the work of, you know, the work of Christ may, must go forward. It is even a lesson for each and every one of us. Yes, we serve faithfully. There must be no jealousy when the time comes for a changing of the God. We must understand that, yes, for the church to move forward, we must have new blood coming in. Those more attuned to the times, you know, for example, those who have, you know, perhaps greater skill than us. It's all God's doing. And we must understand our role, play it very well to the best of our ability in our time. But, when, but we must understand when the time comes that we must decrease so others and God's work must increase. The Lord be with you. And so we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We continue with our collect for today. And as we celebrate the Feast of the Nativity or the Birth of St. John the Baptist, our collect is on page 186. Let us pray. Almighty God, by whose providence your servant John the Baptist was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of your Son, our Savior, by preaching repentance. Make us so to follow his teaching and holy life that we may truly repent according to his preaching and following his example, constantly speak the truth, boldly rebuke vice, and patiently suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue in prayer. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And we continue to pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us and indeed to all people. We pray, Lord, for your people in every part of the world, in all those countries, all those places where your people are found. Help, help us, Lord, to be strong in the faith, to be wonderful examples, Lord, of your love. May we truly represent your love to the world touch hearts and minds and transform lives, Lord, into the lives that you would want all people to live. Today we pray for the entire world, for all the countries of the world where you know, all kinds of suffering is taking place, for those countries where there is war and fighting and death and destruction. Ukraine is the main country in the world, but Father, there are other parts of the world as well where civil war is taking lives and causing famine and starvation, even of little children. Parts of Ethiopia and even the Sudan and other places. Father, we pray for peace, for, for an end to fighting, Lord. For peace that would bring back, you know, restore the lives of people who are suffering. Pray that you will, Lord, touch hearts and minds of all those who are bent on war and change their hearts so that they seek peace. For persons in other countries of the world who are suffering from, you know, by other means where there is, is tragedy and natural disaster. We pray for people living under conditions of oppressive governments where they're suffering day by day. 
Father, we pray for all those persons as they cry out. Father, that you reach out and, and touch and change the conditions of their lives. Give them strength and courage and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for your church worldwide, all the leaders, Lord, of all Christian denominations. We pray today for the Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, and head of the Anglican Communion. In our own province, the Church in the province of the West Indies, we pray for the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, our Archbishop and Bishop of Jamaica. And Father, we continue to pray for all the bishops of our province, that you will continue to inspire and bless them, that our church in this province will really be a church of influence in the lives of the people in our region. We pray especially for our Bishop Claude, Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago. We pray for continued strength and courage, Lord, for inspiration and your guidance. We pray for his wife who is ill for continued healing. We pray for the family who have had recently the loss of their mother. We ask your blessings upon them. For all our clergy, Lord, who are sick and in need of our prayers, we lift them up today. Especially we pray for our bishops of the past. Bishop Clive and Bishop Rawl and their spouses and all the clergy who are in need of our prayers today. We lift them up before you today. And Father, we pray for our church, the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago in this country of ours, for all our clergy in, the, in our various parishes, because Lord, to work together with you know, other Christians to Extend your work, Lord, to every corner of this land. That your name may be known by all people, and your love be known through the work that we do in reaching out to the need to meet the needs of those, Lord, who really do need a hand, a helping hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up our leaders in our country, our prime minister members of cabinet, members of parliament, members of the opposition, all persons in positions of authority who make decisions that affect the lives of, of others. We ask you, Lord, to so touch their hearts that their decision-making we always consider the good of all. And we pray today for all those who have awakened to a day of need, the sick and suffering, the bereaved, those who have suffered loss of properties, many have been laid off from their jobs and they've lost jobs. We pray for people in every situation, Lord, who are wondering, you know, what's going to happen, you know, what's going to happen to them in their situations. Those who need hope, Father, we pray for them. Those who are going astray, and especially our young people, embarking on, on paths that would you know, lead to their demise, we pray for them. Young people going into crime, for example, Lord, we pray that you change hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray together the prayer of dedication on page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet a light to our paths and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.